Hi everyone, welcome back to World Class Inventors. This is video number 20 in the series. And today I'm gonna introduce an entirely new topic to you. And we're gonna be shifting gears in a sense. The next few videos that I'm gonna be producing are gonna be centered around patents. So we're gonna start off with provisional patents, work our way into non-provisional patents. I'm gonna to explain to you what patent pending means. We're gonna get into patent providers, meaning patent attorneys or patent prosecution attorneys, patent agents. I'm gonna show you your role that you're gonna to need to be playing. I'm actually gonna show you how to do nearly all of this yourself. And I'm not gonna be showing it to you so that you can cut out a professional or a middleman. That's not the purpose. The purpose of it is this. You need to be fully engaged as an inventor and a product developer. You cannot and you should not count on anybody getting inside of your head and figuring out exactly what your idea, your improvement, or in your invention is. It's very hard to communicate to another human being exactly what you're onto. And that's why I want you fully involved. Because when it comes time for you to fully develop your idea, your concept, your product, and you get ready for the great moment, which is marketing, you're gonna to need to know what your product is from the inside out. You're gonna to have to become a visionary over time, and you are gonna to have to grow into the role of becoming a master salesman in order to market your idea against some fairly significant odds. So if you farm this out to everybody, like you might do with your landscaping or different projects around the house, I think you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot. You're gonna be at a disadvantage. You need to know how to do this from the inside out and from the molecular level. And that's what I'm gonna hopefully be sharing with you based upon all of my travels and my experiences. So I'm gonna be sharing with you the difference between what a patent attorney is, what a patent agent is, and your role. There's only three entities that can file these specific applications. And I mean a provisional, a non-provisional, and they are you as an individual, you can do this, or you need a licensed patent attorney or a licensed patent agent to do it. Legally, that's how the system works. So I'm gonna be taking you on to, I guess my own account, and I'm gonna show you and demystify how a provisional patent application is filed. The fee is $75. You can do it from the comfort of your home, on a laptop, and I guess you can do it on your phone as well. And you upload your files. You're basically gonna upload the application itself, who you are, your personal information, and the file that contains your provisional. And I'll walk you through that. Now, there are services on the internet that start out at $175, and they go to $199, and I have seen patent attorneys charge significantly more for this service. Now, they might get involved in writing your specification. I'm not sure. 
But as far as these services are concerned, you're gonna be sending them your files, you're gonna be paying the $75, and then they're gonna charge you the 175 to 199 and the price goes from there to submit it to the PTO. They're not gonna be writing it for you. You're gonna be doing it. So if that's the case, I'm gonna show you how to write it and how to submit it yourself. So we'll demystify that. Then we will move on to the non-provisional patent, the non-provisional patent application that is gonna have to include your claims, which are premier, and it's gonna include your drawings, which have to be professionally done and um, submitted and qualified in the format in which the patent office recognizes these drawings. Now, you can draw them yourself, but you chance a good uh, percentage of getting kicked out by the examiner because he's going to disqualify you on your on your figure drawing. So why even expose yourself to that blunder? You're better off paying a professional to do your drawings. But we'll get to all that when the time comes. I want to say this before I move on to non-provisional um, non patents. A provisional patent is nothing more than the documentation of your idea. It gets uploaded, the file gets uploaded, you pay a fee, and you get a date certain that the office received your application. From that point forward, the clock starts ticking 365 days, and after 365 days, your provisional has expired. If during that period of time, you did not bother to file a non-provisional patent, the one with the claims, you will lose what is called a priority date. And it's a coveted date because it lets you go off of your provisional. So the provisional runs and during that time, you file the non-provisional and you're covered from the very moment you filed your provisional application, even though it's not as specific or as detailed as your non-provisional. These provisional applications, when they're received by the USPTO, are just held in abeyance, in confidence, in perpetuity for 365 days for you to file the non-provisional. They're not read by a human being. They're not machine read. They're just received and filed. And then your account is there and your account is made aware of with the PTO once your non-provisional has been filed. So it knows to date your provisional patent and it knows to go off of your non-provisional. So it's seamless. So your idea and your receipt is seamless. And that's the reason for the provisional and then the non-provisional being filed off the back thereof. I'm gonna get into the strengths and weaknesses of patents they're not everything that it's been made out to be. You're not necessarily gonna to be told about this, certainly not from a patent attorney or a patent agent, unless you get yourself into some hot water or unless you directly ask them these questions. The answers to life are not often volunteered by the people who have lived it. The answers to life come after you experience it, or unless there is a person out there or persons who have lived it and have decided to share it with you. Kind of like letting you know what's over the crest of the next hill or around the next bend before you get to it. And that's what this series is about. So I'm going to share with you the strengths and the weaknesses of patents. 
We're going to get into some of the foundational laws behind them, the laws that have been passed by Congress. It's called the U.S. Code. And I'm going to show you where to find a good site where you can look up the, uh, the laws that pertain to you. I won't get too lawyerly, but I am going to be sharing with you some of the rules and the regulations of the USPTO, some of the laws that are pertinent to what you're doing. We're going to talk about trade secrets a little bit. We want to keep your trade secrets separate from your claims. We don't want your trade secrets in your patent application because your trade secrets are another level of protection and you shouldn't be sharing them with anybody until you know how to formulate trade secrets and protect them and go about sharing them under the proper auspices of a separate type of contract and it has nothing to do with your patent. So we keep them out of there. So in closing, I have a whole universe and a deep dive that I want to share with you about patents. And we're going to go through it manually. We'll go through the provisional manually. We'll go through the non-provisional man manually. We'll get into everything you need to know about the universe of patents based upon my experience. And it will be a primer for what you're going to be doing. So thanks again for stopping by. I really appreciate it. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video shortly where we're going to pick it up with provisional patents and then we'll move along. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.